live from Midtown Manhattan, the Cube's live coverage of Big Data NYC, a Silicon Angle Wikibon production, made possible by Hortonworks, We Do Hadoop, and Wham Disco, Hadoop Made Invincible. And now your co-hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hi, everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Kelly. We're with Wikibon, and this is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's continuous production. We're here at Big Data NYC, right across the street from the Hilton, where Stratacomp and Hadoop World is going on. We've got a multi-time CUBE guest, Jack Norris, the CMO of MapR is here. Jack, welcome back to theCUBE. Good to thank see you, Dave. you again. Thank you, Dave. So, by the way, thank you so much for the support. As you know, we're across the street here at the Warwick Hotel. MapR, you guys have always been so generous supporting theCUBE. We can't thank you enough for that, so really appreciate it. Thank you. So we were able to listen to your keynote yesterday. It was, we, we, we weren't broadcasting you know, head to head yesterday and uh, had an opportunity to hear your keynote. So first of all, how did that go? I want to ask you some questions about it. Uh, it, it was uh, really well received um, and uh, I think people were kind of clamoring to try to separate the myths from, from reality on, on Hadoop. So you had three myths that you talked about, you know, one related to the, the distro. I actually like to get into some of those. So sure. what was the, the first myth was around the, 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 distri the distribution battle. So take us through that. So, uh, you know, the, the impression that it's a, a knockdown, drag out, competitive battle across uh, Hadoop distributions was the first myth. And the reality is that all of the distributions share the same open source Apache code and this is one of the first markets that's really, really created, uh, or the first open source technologies that's really created a market. I mean, look what's happened here with this whole, uh, this whole big data and Hadoop. But given that early stage, there's the requirement to really combine that open source code with additional innovations to meet customer needs. And so what you see is you see those aggregators that are taking open source, uh, you see others that are taking the open source and then adding maybe management utility, a couple of, of uh, you know, different applications on top. <clears throat> and then our approach at MapR is we're taking the open source with those management innovations, doing some development in the open source uh, community with things like Apache Drill, and then really focusing on the underlying architecture, the data platform, and providing innovations at that layer. So you guys have been actually sort of, of the three major distros that we talk about all the time, you know, you guys, uh, Hortonworks and, and Hadoop, you guys have been consistent the whole time, as, as has Hortonworks, right? Uh, Cloudera basically, you know, put out a post recently saying, hey, we're kind of going in a different direction, sort of what I, what I call the tapped out of the Hadoop distro, you know, piece of it. But so there's a lot of discussion around it. You're, you're putting forth that, hey, it's not an internecine war, but does it matter is my question. Well, I, I think if you take a step back, uh, the Hadoop ecosystem is incredibly strong, growing very, very quickly. Fastest growing big data technology, one of the top 10 technologies overall. And I think it's because we are sharing the same API. It is possible for customers to you know, learn on one, develop, and move seamlessly to another. And you know, in the keynote, I talked about the difference between the NoSQL market, which is you know, there is no consensus there. And, and Customers have to figure out not only what's the right wor workload, but what's the technology that's actually going to have um, some staying power. Well, that, that, that's a powerful comment. I mean, Amazon turned the data center into an API. You know, the Hadoop community is essentially turning data <laughs> access into an API. And that is a very powerful and leverageable concept. Okay, your second myth was around the whole NoSQL yes. piece of yes. it. You, helped, you put up a slide. I thought I, you know, I read Jeff Kelly's reports and I thought I, I thought I knew them all, but there were a couple in there that I didn't recognize. <laughs> you probably knew them all, but, so take us through myth number two. I, and I, I'm sure we missed, uh, <laughs> we missed some. Uh, there wasn't room on the slide <laughs> for any more. <laughs> but the, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it, it's basically about the consensus. There is no real consensus. There's no common API. Uh, there's no ability to move applications seamlessly across NoSQL solutions. Uh, if you look at one NoSQL solution, and that's HBase, a big inherent advantage because it's integrated with Hadoop. <clears throat> you know, this whole trend is about compute and data together. So if you've got a NoSQL solution that's on that same, you know, massive data store, you know, big leg up. And, uh, and then we got into the, well, if you've got HBase that's included in all the distributions, and all the distributions share the same open source, then uh, obviously it must run the same across all distributions. 
and there we shared some pretty interesting data to show the difference when you when you do architectural differences <coughs> and innovations underneath that you can dramatically change the performance of um, of not only MapReduce but of NoSQL. Yeah, so okay, so uh, not all NoSQL is created equally, not all HBase is created equally is essentially what you're saying there. Um, now the third piece was Hadoop is enterprise ready, right? Yeah. So you guys were first to say, well, we have a yeah. actually Hadoop <coughs> platform that's enterprise ready. Way ahead on that, um, got criticized a lot for going down that path, shrugged and said, okay, <laughs> we'll just keep doing business with customers. And you've been, again, very clear and consistent on that. So talk about the third myth. And that's, you know, is, is Hadoop ready for prime time? And I think the way to combat that myth is by customer examples mm -hmm. and showing the tremendous success that customers are enjoying with Hadoop. And, uh, you know, we, we don't have time in the cube here to go through, you know, all of them. But, uh, you know, I like to point out 90 billion auctions a day with Rubicon. They've surpassed Google in terms of ad reach. They're doing that on MapR. 1.7 trillion events a month with, with Comscore, that's on, on MapR. Um, you look in, in traditional enterprise, you know, a single retailer with over 2,000 nodes of Hadoop. I mean, it's a key part of their merchandising and retail mm -hmm. operations and combining all sorts of, of data feeds and all sorts of use cases there. Financial services, over a thousand nodes, some risk mitigation, personalized offers, streamlining their, their operations. I mean, it's, it's dramatic. And then, you know, we shared some of the more, um, more interesting ones, uh, esoteric ones like garbage and whiskey and uh, <laughs> weather prediction. Oh yeah, but your customers consider these, we, even as diverse and eclectic as they are, they consider these mission critical applications, right? Oh, absolutely. No, it, it's, and I think that's the difference because what we're talking about is not Hadoop as this cache, right? This temporary processing where we can do you know, some interesting batch analytics and then take that and put that someplace else. Mm -hmm. And yes, there are applications like that, but companies soon realize that if I'm going to use this as a key part of my operations and it's about data on compute, then I want a consistent, permanent store. I want a system of record. So all of the you know, SLAs and high availability and data protection features that they expect in their enterprise applications should be present in Hadoop. Right, let's and that's where we focus. Let's run down a couple of those. What are some of the key uh, capabilities that you need in an enterprise enterprise grade platform that MapR is is addressing. Well, let's let's take let's take business continuity because that's important. Um, if you're really going to trust data there, and you know one of the big drivers as you expand data is how much am I going to spend on it? And if you look at a large investment bank, two hundred and seventy million dollars of their budget not total, but incremental to address the additional capacity, there's a big emphasis for let's look at a better way to do that. So instead of spending $15,000 a terabyte, if you can spend a few hundred dollars a terabyte, that's a huge, huge advantage. And that's the focus of Hadoop. But to do that well, then the features that are in this enterprise storage have to be present. And we're talking about you know, mirroring and not a copy table function, but replication. That's how, that's how organizations do it, right? We're well, talking about recovery, too. And, and recovery, <laughs> you, you know, so. you can't back up a petabyte of information through a copy function, no. right? You have to do a snapshot, you, and you don't the back snapshots up, right? have to be consistent, right? Mm -hmm. and, and we're not saying anything that, you know, an enterprise administrator doesn't know. There is some confusion when you're more on the developer side as to what these features are, and the difference between a fuzzy snapshot and a, and a point in time consistent mm -hmm. snapshot. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the Enterprise Data Hub, this, this concept that uh, Michael Olson with Cloudera introduced yesterday. Um, uh, d tell us a little bit about your take on, on, on Mike's, uh, I guess, definition, and, and essentially, I think, kind of trying to name the category uh, yeah, of yeah, kind yeah. of what Hadoop can do and, what, and where it sits in the architecture. Did you agree with his, his uh, characterization? Yeah, I mean, if you look at, at that description, it's about I'm taking important data and I'm putting it in Hadoop and I'm combining a lot of different data sources. And uh, it's been referred to as a data lake and a data reservoir and a data ocean. I mean, we've heard a lot of terms. Mm -hmm. um, we worked with uh, an outside uh, consultant that was originally an architect at Teradata. 
Um, it's been about eight months, almost a year ago now, where he defined an enterprise data hub. And it's, it's, you know, he went through kind of the list of requirements. And once you move from a transitory to a permanent store, then that becomes an enterprise data hub. And an enterprise data hub can be used to select and process information, maybe it's ETL, and serve some downstream applications. It can also be useful to do analysis directly on it to, you know, to serve different business functions. Mm -hmm. But the system requirements that he established for that, I think are absolutely true, and it's, you have to have the full data protection, you have to have the full disaster recovery, you have to have the full high availability because this is going to be important data serving the organization. If it's data that you can lose, if it's data that you, you don't really care about having highly available, then it's a very narrow use case that that mm. data hub serves. So, so you're saying the enterprise data hub isn't ready for prime time, in your view? No, I'm saying that there, there are requirements, and we have companies today that have deployed an enterprise data hub. Um, and they are quite successful with it. And uh, you know the quotes are the ETL functions that they're doing on that hub are 10 times faster, and it's 10 times cheaper Sorry. than what they're seeing. You're saying your enterprise data hub is ready <laughs> right. prime time. The other guys uh, isn't. Right. Is well, I, yeah. that, <laughs> did I understand? <laughs> that's a sound bite, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think <laughs> I agree. Well, that but, OK, but it's nuanced, right? And so uh, it, you know, the, the customers, because a lot you know, you know, vendors, right, they're all saying the same thing to the customers, right? Yeah. Everybody's, so you, you got your messaging that you've, you've, you know, you've proven out over the last several years, and then the, the entire market starts to use the same terminology. So it is, this is why I like I Jeff's think, question I think about what, is, what are those things yeah, that we're, make we're, a difference. Yeah, we're in a little bit of this, this you know, kind of marketing fog here in, yeah. in the relative early stages. I think the best response there is customer proof points. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think some education. In the very beginning, you know, when they're in development and test, it's really important to understand you know, what is Hadoop and what can I use it for and what data source am I going to leverage? I think the features that we're talking about really start to show up as you deploy in production and as you expand its use mm -hmm. in production. Mm -hmm. And there we've enjoyed tremendous success. So I don't think anybody would argue that you have a lead in this space. Um, I wouldn't. I don't think you would either. This space being yeah. robustness, enterprise ready, yeah. mission criticality. Is your lead Increasing, decreasing, staying the same? What's your sense? Well, it, it's hard because there's no, um, you know, the, the, there's no external service that's out there, you know, yeah. interviewing every customer and, and giving numbers. I do know that we passed 500 paying customers. Uh, I do know that we've got significant deployments. Um, and you can measure those in terms of number of nodes, uh, you know, in the thousands of nodes, you can measure those in terms of use cases. So we've got, you know, one company they've passed 20 different use cases on the same cluster. I think that's an interesting uh, proof point. Um, we're scaling in terms of the number of, of people in an organization that are trained in leveraging the data in MapR. Again, in the in the thousands. So, um, you know, I, I think this market is so big and so dynamic that this isn't about, you know, one company's success at the, at the expense of everyone else's. It's not a zero-sum game. I think, you know, we're all here kind of raising this, this boat and focusing on this paradigm shift. But um, when it comes to production success, that's our focus, and I think that's where we've, um, we've proven that. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I really want to get your opinion on, um, you know, as, as to do matures and that some of the innovations you guys are doing and, and, and making the platform, you know, basically a multi-application platform. Mm -hmm. You can do more things with Hadoop. Um, and we've been talking with, about this on theCUBE is that as that happens, you're going to start, you as an industry, you're going to start bumping up against the EDW vendors and some of the other database vendors in the traditional world. And you're, now you're doing some of the things that those, those tools can do. Now, you know, two years ago was very much, this, this is all very complementary Hadoop and your EDW. Yep. There's no overlap. We're, we're going to all play nice. Um, but increasingly, we're seeing that there is an overlap. Um, how do you view that? Is that and, and what is your relationship with those with those uh, EDW vendors? And, and what are you hearing from customers uh, when you go into yeah. uh, customer accounts? So, I mean, there's a, there's a lot in that question. Yes. Well, um, I think the f the first comment though is don't look at Hadoop through the single data warehouse lens. Um, and if you look at, at trying to use Hadoop to completely replace a, an enterprise data warehouse, well, there's, there's a few decades of experience there. There are many organizations that have 
a lot of activities that are based on that data warehouse. And that's where we're seeing a data warehouse offload that is complementary, but it gives organizations this lever to say, well, I'm going to control the fill rate, and I'm going to take some of the data that's no longer you know, really active and put that on Hadoop and really change my ability to manage the cost in a data warehouse environment. The other thing that's interesting is that the types of applications that Hadoop are doing, I think, are creating a new class. Um, it's about operations and analytics kind of combined together, taking high arrival rate data and making very quick micro changes to, to optimize, whether that's fraud detection or recommendation engines or taking sensor data and you know, predictive analytics for, for maintenance, et cetera. There, it's just a tremendous number of, of applications, in some cases leveraging a new data source, in some cases doing new applications. but. Um, it's just opening things up, and, and I think organizations are moving to be very data-driven, and Hadoop is at the center of that. That's great, and the, the, you control the fill rate. That's another really good sound bite, so thank you for that. <laughs> um, and, and these that you mentioned, this high arrival rate data, this fraud detection, predictive analytics, maintenance, these are things that you're doing today with yes. Mapbar, right? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, great. All right, Jack, well, listen, always a pleasure. Thanks very much for coming by. Great to see you thank again. Thank you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Thanks. We'll be right back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from the Big Apple.